Hello, everyone. I'm reaching out for advice and support under the pseudonym OP to maintain privacy. I'm a 30-year-old woman caught in a difficult situation, and I could really use some guidance. My emotions are a mix of confusion, anger, sadness, and feeling lost, leaving me with no choice but to share my story. To provide some context, until recently, my relationship with my husband, whom I'll refer to as Dill, was seemingly perfect. We dated for several years, and when he finally proposed, it felt like a dream come true. Dill was everything I had ever hoped for in a partner, sweet, caring, kind, and compassionate. I envisioned growing old with him, raising children, and having grandchildren. However, my idyllic vision has crumbled. Despite being initially oblivious to the signs, red flags began appearing over the past few months. Dill became increasingly distant and cold, and I found myself making excuses for his behavior. I convinced myself that his long working hours were the cause, attributing it to his dedication to supporting us and securing our financial future. I even blamed myself at times, thinking I might be the reason for his occasional outbursts. There were instances when Dill would come home late or in the early morning, offering explanations about extended work hours. However, I started questioning these explanations, realizing that he wasn't always working when he claimed to be. Despite having a day off, he concocted last-minute stories about being called in for a late-night shift by his boss. I ignored my gut instincts and dismissed these shady occurrences, convincing myself that I was being overly jealous and controlling. Today, everything changed. When Dill dropped divorce papers on me, I decided it was time to confront the situation. Instead of cowering, I surprised him with a revelation of my own. I calmly told him that he could take those divorce papers, but I had something up my sleeve. This marked a turning point in our relationship, and I need advice on how to navigate the challenges ahead. It's become evident that a woman named Donna played a role in Dill's recent behavioral shift, and I'm determined to unravel the truth. Any guidance or support would be greatly appreciated as I navigate through this difficult time. I was aware that Dill and Donna spent a significant amount of time together, but my suspicions heightened when I discovered he was increasingly choosing her company over work commitments. Despite being colleagues, Dill would casually dismiss my concerns, often gaslighting and manipulating me into believing I was overreacting or being irrational. Despite the burning suspicions that plagued my mind, I pressed on with my life, ignoring the late-night thoughts that surfaced when lying in bed alone, yearning for Dill's return from work. As Dill and Donna's friendship deepened at work, I noticed a shift in Dill's priorities. He began canceling our date nights at the last minute, attributing it to work obligations. However, subtle details revealed that Donna was consistently the only other person on his shift. Despite my discomfort with their increasing closeness, I chose to push those thoughts aside. Now, confronted with the shocking reality, I have yet to obtain concrete proof of Donna's involvement in this mess. Nevertheless, it's time to delve into the heart of my story. Dill blindsided me with divorce papers today. Unraveling years of marriage, strumbling to comprehend the abrupt turn of events, I cried and pleaded with Dill to reconsider. However, he remained unmoved, offering no consolation. It felt as though I were facing an indifferent stranger, devoid of the warmth and love I once believed Dill possessed. As I gathered myself, attempting to suppress the overwhelming tide of tears, I repeatedly questioned Dill about the reasons behind his decision. His response cut deep. He claimed to no longer be in love with me, as if our entire history together meant nothing. To compound the emotional distress, Dill callously revealed his intention to sell my parents' house for a lucrative payday. It was a heart-wrenching blow, leaving me incredulous at his attempt to magnify my suffering after dropping such a devastating bombshell. The situation, however, struck me as oddly ironic. Reflecting on the past, I can't help but recall the casual remarks Dill used to make about how wonderful my parents' home was. He often spoke about wanting to live there during his retirement. My parents, who cherished Dill as much as I did, believed we would be together forever. 
solidifying this notion by naming him the owner of their house in their will. Their intention was to ensure that we both had access to our family home. Preserving the memories of my parents became crucial, especially now that they are no longer with us. Despite my emotional connection to the house, Dill's true nature as a manipulator and lacking compassion has become evident. It's heartbreaking that he is divorcing me and planning to sell my parents' home. In retrospect, signs of his ulterior motives surfaced, especially when Dill and Donna started their secretive meetings. Dill's comments about retiring and living in my parents' home were not idle musings. They were calculated plans, much closer to reality than I could have imagined. Even as I expressed justified anger and pain, a lingering love for Dill remains. However, in my damaged mental state, I comprehend that there's no turning back. Presented with neatly laid out divorce papers, it was evident that Dill had been orchestrating this behind my back. Despite professing love, he had already decided to divorce me and sell my family home. The revelation shattered the image of the man I thought I loved. Considering these devastating revelations, I made the painful decision to sign the divorce papers, sealing the end of our marriage. Dill, now my ex-husband, left for a hotel, callously advising me to find a better job for a new place since my parents' family home was no longer an option. His disregard for my feelings is evident in his intention to ensure my removal from our current house's lease. This stark reality exposes the extent of Dill's indifference. Despite never wronging him, he seems perfectly content to render me homeless out of spite and cruelty. I find it difficult to comprehend the depth of this situation. If it's not clear from what I've shared, I could really use some advice. I've never navigated a divorce, let alone face such a blindsiding tragedy in my life. Even when my parents passed away due to terminal illnesses, I had time to plan and prepare. This time, the suddenness hit me like a large speeding bus of bricks to the face. I understand many may suggest hiring a divorce lawyer to counteract his legal representation, but finances are tight. Lawyers' prices seem exorbitant online, and Dill, the primary earner in our household, convinced me to quit my high-paying job two years ago to manage the house while he handles the bills. In hindsight, it appears part of his scheme to make me helpless and dependent on him. Those days are over, and though I still love Dill, I'm fully prepared to go to war to ensure he doesn't take my parents home from me. Update number one. Hello, everyone. It's Op, back with another update. First, I want to express my gratitude to those who left kind and supportive comments. I truly appreciate it, given how alone, isolated, and stressed I feel right now. Many of you shared valuable advice, and I'm thankful for that too. I wish I could dismiss this as a bad dream, but unfortunately, things keep getting crazier. It's been a few days since my last update, and today marked the first time I heard from Dill since signing the divorce papers. When he called me earlier, I foolishly entertained a tiny hope that he might express a change of heart. I know it's naive, considering he just dumped me, and it will take time to get over him, despite recognizing his true, horrible nature. As expected, he didn't call to reconcile. Instead, his voice sounded shaky and angry in a different way. The first thing he asked was why I didn't tell him the truth about my parents' home. I inquired about what he was referring to, and he brought up the mortgage, a detail that had slipped my mind. The family home my parents left me was heavily mortgaged. Dill sounded furious, demanding that I rectify the situation by paying off the debt, or else he would be burdened with it. In response, I laughed in his face, and unexpectedly, Dill began to cry during our phone conversation. It was a mix of pathetic and satisfying, and I must admit, there was a strange sense of satisfaction in hearing him cry. He vowed revenge and abruptly hung up. I have a foreboding sense about what might come next, and it's clear Dill is serious. Any advice on how to handle this would be appreciated. Update number two. Hello again, it's Op with another update. I want to express my gratitude to everyone who has been reading and supporting me. It means a lot. Unfortunately, things aren't improving, and it seems I might have to resort to drastic measures if there's no positive change soon. 
Dealing with the divorce and Dill's attempt to take my parents home has been challenging enough. But today's events were beyond the pale. Sitting in my empty house, still in my pajamas from a sleepless night of crying over the divorce, I heard an aggressive knock on the door. Dill's voice called my name, accompanied by a strangely familiar woman's voice in the background, Donna. Peering through the peephole, I was immediately disgusted by the sight of her standing by Dill's side. Without opening the door, I firmly instructed them to leave my property immediately or face consequences. Despite my refusal, Dill and Donna escalated their shouting and banging on the door, demanding payment for the debt Dill claimed from the mortgaged house. I dismissed their demands, telling them to keep dreaming and suggesting they take the matter to court if they wanted the money. When their persistence continued, I had no choice but to call the police. They left swiftly. But unfortunately, the police were of no help since the incident wasn't captured on camera. What course of action should I take? I fear Dill and Donna won't relent until they believe they've obtained what they think I owe them. I'm reaching out to seek advice on how you would handle this situation. Update number three. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sticking with me. Unfortunately, I'm back with another update, and it pains me to say that this drama is far from over. In fact, it's getting worse. Dill and Donna persist in pushing me, and I feel like I'm reaching the end of my rope. Firstly, I'll share some pertinent information. For privacy reasons, I'm changing the name of a well-known lawyer in our area to Jackson Goodman. He's a formidable figure you hire when you mean serious business. Renowned for his track record of never losing in court, he's highly persuasive, often winning over juries and judges with his charisma. The reason this matters for you, the readers, is that I received a letter from none other than Jackson Goodman in my mailbox this morning. Given Dill and Donna's anger regarding the undisclosed debt from the mortgage house, I had a hunch they might pursue legal action against me. However, I didn't anticipate them hiring the most expensive and famous lawyer in our area. Now, I'm genuinely scared. In our small town, news spreads quickly and this legal battle is likely to become public knowledge. As I mentioned in my previous post, I'm financially strained from not working and relying on Dill's support for so long. He was the one who urged me to quit my job, and now he expects me to hand over a substantial sum of money. It's utterly ludicrous, but due to my financial constraints, I can't afford a lawyer. Even if I could, the attorneys within my budget wouldn't stand a chance against someone like Jackson Goodman. According to the letter, Dill and Donna are suing me for the entire debt from the house, as well as for pain and suffering and legal fees. I find myself in a dire situation, and I'm unsure how to navigate it. Any advice on how to extricate myself from this predicament would be greatly appreciated. Update number four. Hello, everyone. Op here, back with another update. It's been a while since my last one, and many of you have been wondering what has transpired. I wanted to check in and bring you up to speed on everything that has been unfolding in my life. I appreciate all the advice I received, and I've taken one particular suggestion to heart. Given my financial constraints, many of you suggested hiring a private investigator since I couldn't afford a lawyer. Taking that advice, I researched local PIs and found one who was affordable yet effective. For legal reasons, I won't disclose his name, but he has been instrumental in helping me gather crucial information. I tasked my private investigator with finding evidence of Dill's wrongdoing that could aid my case in court. Shockingly, he uncovered evidence of Dill's infidelity within our own home. The evidence had been right in front of me, and it was a painful revelation. However, I recognized its potential significance for my court case. As the court day approached, I asked my private investigator to accompany me, providing support and compiling information to present in court. Jackson Budman, Dill and Donna's formidable lawyer, began his flamboyant act, defaming me with lies about being an awful, abusive person. However, when we presented photographic evidence of Dill's infidelity, the court's opinion shifted. It became evident that Dill and Donna were attempting to swindle me out of my parents' family home. Jackson Budman, visibly unaccustomed to losing, 
looked on the verge of tears. The judge delivered the verdict, declaring both Dill and Donna responsible for reimbursing me for the house and settling the mortgage debts incurred during Dill's ownership. Moreover, they were ordered to cover my legal fees in court expenses. Just like on the phone when Dill called me, he broke down in tears right there in the courtroom. As much as I thought I might feel sympathy, considering the emotional turmoil he caused me in recent weeks, witnessing his humiliation felt deserved. Final update. Greetings, internet folks. It's Op once again, and I'm here for the last update. Many of you have been curious about what unfolded after the court date, and I've been meaning to share all the details. However, I've been caught up in living my new life. Yes, that's right. I've found an amazing guy, and we've been dating for a while. He has helped me move on from the Dill chapter in my life. Upon discovering my new relationship, Dill resumed harassing me. Fortunately, I obtained a restraining order from the judge overseeing our divorce case. Now, if Dill or Donna come within 1,000 feet of me or my home, a simple call to the police results in their immediate arrest. Justice is sweet, and my new boyfriend has been incredibly supportive throughout this entire drama. I feel safe and secure in his arms, and I trust that he would never betray me the way Dill did. For those wondering about the fate of my parents' old home that Dill and Donna attempted to steal, that's where I'm living now. The old house, once shared with Dill, held too many reminders of our troubled relationship. With the house entirely paid off and no debt remaining, I am now the rightful owner of the family home, just as my parents intended. I'm happily residing there with my new boyfriend, and life is good. If my parents were alive to see me, I believe they would have supported and been proud of me for standing up to Dill's abusive manipulation and cruel behavior. Lastly, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you on this thread. Your support, advice, and engagement have been invaluable. I couldn't have navigated through all this without your help. Thanks again. Well, that wraps up Op's story. If you were in Op's position and familiar with the details of her life, how would you handle the situation with the ex and all the complexities involving Dill and Donna? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Let's discuss.